treating yourself 2013, the idea of being able to purchase a piece of glass for over $1,000 was, you know, very foreign to a lot of people. And now it's becoming, you know, much, much more normal. We had a 40 person line for an order to the $1,500 price range and up. And in most cases, people came and bought the most expensive pieces first. Yeah, they just weren't even supposed to start lining up until nine o'clock. <laughs> been there for what, 18 hours now? Since Thursday night. We tried to make it as fair as possible for the collectors as, you know, we have been in that position before and we, you know, try our best to be fair. There's, four, there's 40 people in line and we had someone offer that they buy the entire order and give it out before you even got here. What? And they would have bought the, everything here. They would have bought everything. So I had to be the nice guy and be like, no, I'm sorry, I can't sell you Thank everything. You. Thank you. Honestly, it's worth more to me to have a fair release where everything is close to the price that I wanted to sell for than to gouge one person and then not get any of this. I got a freaking speeding ticket coming down here, Did boys. You? I've seen those kids waiting, the kid who got the egg right away. Yeah. And so he's like, I've been here since Thursday. I'm like, well, I guess we're not going back to the hotel. So yeah. we've been here since. But Seamus from Chirping for not wanting to spend fucking like <laughs> four or five K on it and they came and Chirping a couple weeks ago. So Batman was so now, 20,000 bucks. Yeah. 25,000. <laughs> Damn. Now, I was chirping if you remember a year ago. I didn't want to spend four or five. So, That's how they cost them, man. And now there's 50 people lined up at the door. Oh, well, now you can't get them. They're 25 grand. Yeah. I love my tours. I actually, like, love it. I don't just like it. I, I love it. I would never sell it. Man, I should have brought my tours because so, dude, people are bringing their own pieces. Oh, a section is lovely. You want it? 3K? Okay. People are starting to realize the intrinsic value in what they're what they're purchasing. It's not just a simple piece of glass. It's it's a piece of art. It's something that will not only maintain its value but potentially increase as the artist's career moves forward. Yeah. This has an inline in it. It's a one of one, brother. It's the only one of its kind. There's a, uh, a large demand for some of these art pieces. It's strictly from an investing point of view. It's almost impossible for everybody to get what they need. So there'll be so much room for you know other Canadian artists to, and other artists in general just to explore the the niche. Treating Yourself 2013 was simply put one of the first times that Canadian and American artists and collectors had a chance to kind of get together and almost have like a melting pot type scenario, which really allowed the Canadian scene to become what it is today. There's tons of hard work and dedication behind it, but that amount of exposure and that amount of attention is really what pushes artists to the next level. Glass blowers in Canada are still upwards of a decade behind the people who are doing it in the States. So it's it's hard to really compare the two scenes as one is like the, the infant of the other almost. It's really interesting to see kind of how the Canadian scene grows in relation to the American one because they kind of grow at staggered paces. For instance, there's an artist who first showcased his work at Treating Yourself 2013 named Patrick Lee. He had a simple reticello tube such as this. Who would have thought that he would have ended up creating such beautiful pieces such as this? <laughs> oh, I guess, bro. <laughs> Ooh. So sexy. Okay. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm maybe I'm the leader of the hype train. But like, I don't know. I've watched him double the price in fucking a year. No. Under you. You know as well as I do what's gonna happen to them. I know. They're gonna be with, like. Yeah, the, the glass market's real, real crazy nowadays. Like, yeah. reach out to here from Buffalo, because it's easier for him to come across the one here wow. in Canada and wait for some Americans to do There's only thing. one really? shop in New York that has these, like, down in New York City. Really? Yeah. So it's either drive, like, six hours down or yeah. you know, a couple yeah. hours off. I didn't see this many people were going to show up. I thought 30, 25, 30 people max. I thought they were going to be going to come from. Yeah, Texas. The fact that a couple of these gentlemen traveled as far away as the eastern coast of Canada, you know, in uh, the far reaches of Quebec, even crossing the border from the States is something that I wouldn't have really anticipated a lot of people doing, especially coming to, uh, you know, a small town shop like ours. But I hit the J. Water test, and you can rip on Tabarnak, and you chug, and you can see what it is. When the shield comes, and you can see what it is. No, I think this is fun. I can say forever that I was part of fucking history. This is huge. And, uh, I'm in the last bucket, last colored bucket. I'm gonna be that guy. All the pieces got sold. There's only like 14. There's a green ball right here, but I didn't bring a car with me. The Niagara region acts as a really uh, important conduit point in terms of uh, where we sit on the eastern seaboard, being right on the New York-Ontario border, as well as being within an hour drive of uh, Toronto. It's very easy to see that events and uh, bringing together artists and collectors alike is going to be the future of a store like Higher Society Glass.